Welcome to another edition of Deeper Dive. I'm that host, Jay Wall. And this is a, a podcast, as we always have. This is season five, episode 30. And of course, my co-host, Dawn, is away at this time. So keep her and her family in prayers at this time. I also thank the people in podcast land for taking the time out to listen to us. I hope that your spirits will feel what you hear, whatever you hear from us through the podcast. As always, any comments you want to give us, you can contact us at 954-388-8780. And you can always find us at plantationsta.tv. I want to apologize to our listeners today. I'm uh, recovering from a slight flu, so I might sound hoarse. So please forgive me for that. And as always, we have our favorite pastor, our senior pastor today, Pastor Noel Rose. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Joe. It's always a pleasure to be with you. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you will get better soon. And I was just thinking as you were talking, what a trooper you are to be continuing with this, even as you are, even as you're recovering. I pray that you have a speedy recovery. But it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Will I receive gold at the Olympics for that? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, thank you for that. Well, this past Sabbath, is, we had Connection Sabbath. So, uh, of course, you were in, in nice in your dapper plaid. So we want to thank you for that. And <laughs> for that there as well. Um, as before, we as we always do, let's start off with a word of prayer and we can proceed. Father God, we thank you once again for all you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for just your mercy and your grace, Lord, because without that, we will be nowhere. So we ask you, Lord, to continue to bless us through this podcast. Bless my voice. Bless our pastor, Lord, and this message that's about to be reviewed. We thank you. And a special prayer for the Costa family, for the passing of uh, Pastor Costa's father. We want you to continue to bless their family and keep them in your bosom. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay. Before we get started, I want to give a little honorable mention. I want to thank uh, Elder Malone for doing the teacher's dedication uh, and the awards and um, presentations that he did for uh, Sawgrass Adventist School and the Little Peak of Heaven preschool. And, and teachers in general. I think that was such a beautiful yes. thing. You know, there was a teacher. She was actually a guest, public school teacher. She mm -hmm. came and inquired if she could be part of it. And I told her, yeah, sure. We're honoring all teachers. Of course, we we begin with our home 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 folks, the, yes. the Sawgrass folks. Mm -hmm. And of course, we extend it to others. And afterwards, afterwards, Joe, after at the, at the end of the service, she came up and expressed how grateful she was that we had we had recognized them as teachers. So we pray for our teachers as they embark on this new this new school year, this upcoming school year, I think it begins here in, in Florida on the 12th. Yes. August. Yes. Yes. I also want to thank our new uh, Sawgrass uh, principal. Is it pronounced Lusni Alphonse? Lusni Alphonse. Yes. Lusni okay. Alphonse. Okay. Lusni Alphonse. And good. And of course, our vice principal, which a lot of people us know, Elena Hurst. So we want to thank them for uh, leading the the path for the students uh, this yes. year. Yes. And, and I also want to mention about the Pathfinders are already in Gillette, Wisconsin at this moment. So I'm sure they're enjoying themselves out there uh, yes. for that. International so, Campery. Right. Pathfinders from all over the world. I'm happy that our young people, Joe, were able to go. At least we have, my understanding, we have about 50 plus Yes, and I'm sure that they will have an experience that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. And I'm and I'm always excited about these situations. Let me say it quickly because mm -hmm. our young people get a chance to be exposed to the church, the, yes. the church, and to appreciate that our church is a global church. It's a yes. large church. It's not just about what's happening in the local congregation. And so I'm sure that the experience or the experiences that they'll have in this experience this campery will stay with them for the rest of their lives believe me i will we set the path for our, our global leaders before christ comes amen so we want to thank amen. you for that and of course last but not least we have to save the best for last we want to thank your wife your wonderful wife christine for defending her dictatorial uh dissertation so congratulations wow. to her wow. wow that was quite that was quite an event it happened this past 
last Thursday, Joe, we had almost a uh, hundred plus devices on as as she went through the process of defending this uh, dissertation. It it, it 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 literally has been a nine year journey, nine year wow. journey for her. Spits and stops, number of challenges, but mm -hmm. God saw her through. God saw mm -hmm. her through, and so she has defended successfully. And in a matter of weeks, the degree will be conferred. And I was joking with her that, you know, I guess in a couple of weeks there, I, I'll i have to, I can't just call you Hun. I'll have to call you Dr. Hun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think that will stick. I think that will stick <laughs> if we're doing that. But congratulations to her. She's a marvelous female, marvelous lady, and you are one blessed brother. So I want to thank God. you for that. And now she should be enjoying the fruits of her labor. Praise God for doing that. All right, let's get to the subject. Unity and diversity in one body. How did you uh, come up with this sermon? Well, as you mentioned, Joe, this past Sabbath was our Connection Sabbath. And we've been doing this now, I think, for a little over a year, where we dedicate the first Sabbath of the month as Connection Sabbath, because we're trying to encourage our, our folks and all those who, who come on our campus, those who walk through our doors, to find meaningful connection, to find mm -hmm. meaningful connection, just, you know, just beyond the connection, beyond the, you know, happy Sabbath and the casual greetings, to find meaningful connections. And so I, I always set out to present messages in keeping with that theme, mm -hmm. in keeping with that theme. And so as I thought about it and prayed about it and wrestled with the Holy Spirit, I thought, let me share let me share this message and it's 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 sort of a part two to a message that i'd shared earlier at, okay. at least a few sabbaths ago you know and mm -hmm. and so this i i believe was such a a fitting fitting subject for the occasion for our connection sabbath understood understood okay so let's let's, let's take it back here's apostle paul um, this is from First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's talking about oneness. Yes. And he's talking about, you said you mentioned it about 13 times. Mm. 13 but, times. But, yes. Talk about that more. 13 times in, 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 in these 20, 20 verses. That's First Corinthians 12, 12 to 31. Paul talks about, he talks about oneness and he uses the word oneness. Mm -hmm. He uses the word one, and so this this is important. And I, I thought it was it was 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 also important, Joe, to give a bit of backdrop to, to 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 the message that Paul gives in mm -hmm. these verses, and reminding folks and informing some folks that Paul didn't write these letters to the churches because he had nothing to do, but mm -hmm. he wrote them to address specific issues. And in this, and in this case, the folks at in Corinth, the, the believers in Corinth, they mm -hmm. got into a a rivalry of sorts, a competition of sorts, yes. as it related to as it related to spiritual gifts. And mm -hmm. there are those who, who who believed that having the gifts, the gift rather of speaking in tongues was the most important gift of all the gifts yes. speaking in tongues was the most important gift and those persons who possessed the gift they were superior christians they're superior mm -hmm. christians and so paul is seeking to address this attitude of rivalry and this attitude of competition that that was going on there in the church at corinth mm. so talk more about this letter this letter was to do what to encourage so he's seeking to correct this, right? He's mm -hmm. seeking to correct this. He's seeking to point out to them that, first of all, you've been called into one body. Mm -hmm. He's seeking to help them to appreciate the importance of unity. And he does so by drawing upon the metaphor of the human body, yes. something that they could all relate to, whether they be be, 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 be Jews or Greeks, right? Because he mentions that, you know, whether you're, you're Jew or you're Greek, you've been called into one body. They could all, they could all relate to this metaphor. In other words, the metaphor was relatable. 
He says, yes. just as how the human body is a single unit made mm -hmm. up of different parts, so you are a single single unit, the church, made yes. up of different parts. And he was helping them to realize that the church works well when the church, when every member, every part works together. Mm -hmm. And not one part believing it's more important or one part believing it doesn't need the other part. And so he uses this metaphor of the body to illustrate the importance of unity in the body of Christ. And mm -hmm. he was seeking, by, by making this argument, to, to push back against the spirit of rivalry and the spirit of competition. And I do believe that as, as believers, we're, we've been called into the body of Christ not as competitors. Right. We've, we've been called not to compete, as I mentioned on Sabbath, but to collaborate. Yes. God wants to use our, our specific gifts that he's given to us he wants to use our individual experiences and our uniqueness for his glory. So he brings us together, regardless of where, where we're from, Jews or Greeks, Gentiles, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. He brings us together so that we can work together. And so Paul is pushing back against this, this spirit of competition and rivalry, this, this, this thinking or this teaching that those who had the gift of tongues were yes. the superior Christians. And that mm -hmm. was the most important gift in the body of Christ. You know, that's a very true statement because I, I know you spoke about the schism in the body. I think that was verse 25. Why yes. is it so much of a difference of opinions and beliefs? Why did that have to be there if this is what Paul is doing? You know, he's rebuking these folks, but you know, so he's seeing the schism going in the body. Yes, he, he's, he's, pushing, he's pushing back against this attitude because he knows that this type of attitude will lead to a schism, to a separation in the body. Remember now, Paul is talking to a diverse group of Christians. Yes. And he's helping them to appreciate that diversity, diversity can be a blessing. Yes. It can be a blessing if you care for each other. It can Keywords. be a blessing if you acknowledge the fact that every person in the body of Christ mm -hmm. is as important as the other person. And so when he uses the, the metaphor of the body, you know, he says, you know, the eye can say, well, because I'm not an eye, I'm not going to do what I'm called to do. I'm not of the body. Or, or the hand can say, well, because I'm not, a, I'm not the foot, then, 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 then I'm not of the body. Mm -hmm. And and then Paul says, what if the entire body was an eye? What mm -hmm. would happen to the hearing? <laughs> and 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 he reasons, he reasons from we would say the the sublime to the ridiculous. He he makes he makes what is considered to be an absurd, a ridiculous uh, statement because he wants to 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 to, uh, to capture their attention. Mm -hmm. Nobody expects that the the entire body will be an eye you know it would be quite interesting to say the least <laughs> joe to see a body that was just all eyes right that or would be an kind of creepy mm -hmm. it would be creepy that and would so, be creepy <laughs> and so paul uses this the absurd he uses the absurd to drive home the point of celebrating your differences because god wants to use your differences however diversity can be a problem. It can lead to schism if you don't care for each other. If you continue with this attitude, this rivalry, this attitude of competition, then diversity can end up being a curse. It mm -hmm. can result in division. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Paul is helping them to appreciate that you've been called into one church. By the way, you've been called by one spirit. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. One spirit who called you, whether you be Jew or, 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 or Gentile, one spirit called you into one body. However, the, the, the body of Christ is not reduced to a single individual or yes. a single gift. It doesn't matter how important you think that gift is. And of course, when he gets into chapter 
13, it becomes very obvious that he's talking about their attitude towards the those who had rather the gift of tongues, those who believe. And, and I made it clear when, when Paul talks about tongues, he's not talking about some unintelligible gibberish. He's talking about intelligible language that can be understood, but that the speaker is able to speak it, not because he went to language school or had language training, but mm-hmm. because of the, the, the gift, the supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. That person is able to speak in a tongue that is foreign to them, but intelligible to someone else because of the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying, hey, listen, as important as you think speaking in tongues is, there are other gifts in the body of Christ that are equally important. Yes. And so to, 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 to avoid schism in the body, mm-hmm. we must appreciate and acknowledge that every gift that is every person in the body of Christ has a role to play and their role is important. And the gifts are important because it was and it is God who gives the gifts. Paul makes, make, makes it clear. He says, it is God who has set the members in the body, right? Mm-hmm. It is God who has given each member or the different members the gifts. Mm-hmm. And so the gifts are important because of the fact that it came from God, not because I received the gift. It means the gift is more important than, than every other gift. No, it's important because God was the giver of the gift. And as a recipient of the gift, I must use the gift for the glory of God. And in my use, if 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 in using my gift I cause a schism, then we have a problem. Understood. Understood. I, I like the three lenses you spoke about with Paul. So we talk about oneness. We yes, about you, the importance blessings. of unity. Yes. Yeah, the blessings of, of diversity and yes. all gifts are important. That's, yes. that's just as wonderful. Let's get to the big one. I love what you said about this one. Unity is not uniformity. Yes. Blessings mm-hmm. and, and uh, uh, to diversity. Let's speak more about that. Yeah. This, this is this is wonderful here. That that that's important. That's important because there are those who confuse unity with 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 uniformity. Uniformity means that. You know, we, we we dress the same way, we we walk the same way, we we think the same way. That's uniformity. Unity says that we are clear as it relates to our purpose, as it relates to our values. Now we may approach it differently. We may come from different backgrounds, but it's clear as to our our our, our purpose, our vision, and our objectives. And that is expanding the kingdom of God. Uniformity says that you check your brain at the door, I like to say. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, Joe, you check your brain at the door. Uniformity says whatever the leader says, go, you know, mm-hmm. goes, whatever the leader says, goes. Uniformity says that you you can't you can't disagree with ideas. Mm-hmm. But unity yeah. says the goal is clear. Unity says we welcome ideas and we will we will proceed on the best idea as it relates to advancing the cause of Christ. Of course, we're clear as it relates to our values. Those values are given in the Word of God. We're clear on that. And so I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to, to make it clear that that unity is not uniformity because uniformity, uniformity will lead to deformity and deformity will lead to death. If the body was an entire eye or if the body is reduced to a single organ, it's just a matter of time before that organ fails. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time before that organ fails. And so it's as the different parts of the body are working together. Yes. That the body thrives, that the body grows, that the body develops. But once, once different parts start acting differently and acting as if they're they're all that and acting independently off but no mm-hmm. what we see in the body and this is the point that Paul was making is that there is a mutual dependency 
the 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 the, the fingers are dependent on the hand. Yes. And the hand is dependent on the torso and and the leg is depending on the torso. We see mutual dependency as every organ of the body works together for the benefit of the entire body. And I like the the point that 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 Paul makes about if one part of the body is going through pain, mm-hmm. all the other members of the body or the entire body feels the pain. And mm-hmm. if one part of the body is is experiencing joy or does well, then the entire body is doing well or or experiences that that euphoria, if you please. Driving home the point of mutual dependency, of mutual dependency. And so diversity is a blessing if we if we if we if we care for each other, if we love each other, diversity can be a curse. If we are just celebrating the fact that, okay, I am from here and you're not, Mm -hmm. or I have this gift and you don't have it, then, then that can be a problem. That's the divisiveness you were talking about. That can lead to divisiveness. And Paul was lifting up as, as you mentioned in the three things that I covered, Joe, he was mentioning or lifting up the fact that all gifts are important. Mm -hmm. All gifts, every organ Every organ of our of our of our bodies, Joe, is important. They they, they have a function. They have a f- function, and we can't just no sane person is gonna willy nilly say, "Well, you know, I guess I can I can give up my pinky finger today. Uh, <laughs> don't need it." <laughs> no, I, right? I think we need it. <laughs> yeah, um, I like the part when you said the body is has different functions, different needs. But the main thing is to live, grow, and serve. Yes. Yes. That is the main thing. And that's what Paul is trying to steer them back to. Mm-hmm. He's trying to steer them away from the spirit of, of competition and rivalry and say, hey, we are in this together to grow the kingdom of God. And mm-hmm. this is the attitude that we should have, we must have in the body of Christ. If we are going to reach people for Jesus, we've got to value people. We've got to value what they do. We've got to value their giftedness, value the gifts that God has given to them as we seek to work together to advance the cause of Christ. And that's how the body grows. If if we're fighting all the time, if we're if we're competing against each other, that takes up a lot of the energy. That becomes, to put it mildly, a huge distraction from the work of reaching others for Christ. And so you and I must ensure in the body of Christ, what this what does this mean in our lived experiences in the body of Christ? It means, Joe, that I've got to appreciate the value of the podcast that you and Dawn seek to do every week, the value yes. that God, 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 God has placed on that, just as how He's placed value on the greeter in in the foyer at church, the yes. guys doing the parking at the parking lot, mm-hmm. the preacher on the pulpit, the person singing during the praise and worship time to appreciate that all these gifts in the body of Christ are important. Amen for that. So in other words, like you said earlier, don't hate, celebrate. Um, yeah. I, celebrate I, I, that uniqueness, you know, because that's a superpower, a part of the body. Yes, yes. And, and, and I, I made the point because Paul talks about as I mentioned earlier, when 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 one member suffers, we all suffer. Yes. And when one member rejoices, or when one member does well, we, we all celebrate, mm-hmm. and, and, and 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 we all rejoice with that person. And I made the point that there's some folks who can't celebrate the success and achievement of others. They can't celebrate what God it's is doing shame. through others, right? It's, it's a shame. It's, it's really a shame. And, and that's where I I, I I use the opportunity, Joe, 
to 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 bar bar that language from the kids you know don't hate celebrate you know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of hating on people that god whom god is blessing and and they're doing well especially in the body of christ we should celebrate these folks because he, here's the point that paul wants us to appreciate just as he wanted the folks in Corinth to appreciate when any member of the body does well the body does well yes the body does well so why wouldn't i celebrate the fact that a member of the body has succeeded yes why wouldn't i celebrate the fact and i and i use the example of of a husband and wife when mm-hmm. when 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 my wife does well we do well when yes. i do well we do well Thank and you for not, saying that, and not see, Yeah, and not see it as a competition. <laughs> yeah, thank you for saying not that. Not in a competition know, with my wife. Yeah, if she does some, well, we do well, yes. Yeah, there's some people that actually have a problem with that, but I'm glad you said that. You know? Yeah, I, 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 and, and I sure, I, let me quickly say, Joe, and, and, I, and I, shared, I shared that conversation that few of us were having when, when I was when I was courting years ago in, in my in, in my in my circle, my social circle as 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 men, as young men. And there were some guys in my social circle, uh, Joe, who had a problem with with their wife bringing home a, a, a bigger paycheck than them. And, mm-hmm. and, and I told him, listen, I have no issue with that. I have no yeah. issue with that. <laughs> because her paycheck is my paycheck and my paycheck is her paycheck. That's the way Amen. I see it. If Amen. my wife does well, we all do well. If yes, I do well, we all do well. We Example all do the well. Body. Example of the body. So Example you celebrate the, the accomplishment mm-hmm. of others. That's true. That is true. Um, I love it when you made the comment, the world is trending to toward diversity. Toward diversity. All the millennials, the Gen Xs, they get it. Talk about that. Towards diversity. This... This homogeneous society that some folks, you know, are pining for and longing for, I tell them, get over it. It's it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. The world is trending towards diversity. Our children get it. Our grandchildren get it. And the church has to embrace it. And as a matter of fact, we know based on Scripture, those three angels flying in the midst of heaven, Revelation 14, that the gospel is to be taken to every nation, to every language, to every kindred, and every tongue. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we should expect, if we're doing that, we should expect the body of Christ to be diverse. We should expect the body of Christ to be diverse. And one of the, one of the, the, the greatest examples of of god working in our lives is the fact that we can come joe from diverse cultures diverse situations and and come together in the body of christ and worship god and be involved in ministry and get things done in terms of the expansion of the gospel of jesus christ regardless of our culture Yes. Regardless of our upbringing, regardless of our social economic status. By the way, I need to point out that the church at Corinth was a very diverse church because the 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 city of Corinth was a very cosmopolitan city. It mm-hmm. was a very diverse city. It was thriving. Very diverse city. And so in 2024, I am saying. If we are to seriously expand the kingdom of God, if we are seriously to expect God to be working, we've got to expect that God will be working, and I do believe God is working, in diverse mm. in diverse cultures. And so the body of Christ will be a diverse body. Mm. And as I, I mentioned it, I'll say it again, our children get it, our grandchildren get it, they embrace diversity, and you and I in the body of Christ, we must embrace diversity. We must yes. give the gospel to people, share the gospel with people, share the truth with people, regardless of where they, they come from, regardless of their ethnicity. Invite them into the body of Christ. You know what that reminds me of, Pastor, when you talk about the blessing and diversity? It reminds me of Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Yes. After this, I beheld, 
a yes. great multitude. Great multitude. A number a man could not count. All yeah. nations. All Heaven kindred. is going to be yes. a diverse place. Amen. It's going to be a diverse place. And it's not going to be a place where you have one one corner for for this group, another corner for that group, and another corner from for that. No, no, no. Oh. It's going to be it's going to be a coming together because let us be reminded, let us be reminded historically, those of us who are conversant with the history, Joe, let us be reminded that race is a social construct. It's yes. not something developed by God. It's a mm -hmm. social construct. And so God wants us to step beyond this social construct and not be, not be saddled with this social construct. Mm -hmm. And to celebrate the fact that he is working in in folks, regardless of where they they're 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 coming from, and he's brought them together in in his body. It is it is God. Paul says it is God who's placed the members in the body as he pleases. As he pleases, you and I are in the body of Christ. We didn't, and and this is something we we've, we've got to got to make clear based on scripture, and we 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 say it. Sometimes that you know I, I I choose I choose the Lord today, but in reality it is God who chose us. He did. It is God who drew us to Himself. That's true. I like what Apostle Paul said that the human race is to be yes. completed because we all win. Yes, we all win. We all win. We in all Christ, win. we all win. We all win. Christ, that's we that's all what win. it's all about. There is no need for for competition, and of course, got to put this in. Before we close, Joe, sure, Pastor. That Paul ends with what he what he terms the the excellent way. He mm -hmm. says, "I'm going to show you the excellent way," and he he segs he 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 then moves into he segues into chapter thirteen, first mm -hmm. first for instance, chapter thirteen, where he talks about the excellent way, and that excellent way is love. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how 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 he puts it. You know, he he makes it clear. He said, "Listen, listen, listen, listen. It doesn't matter how eloquent you are, right? If you don't have any love, that's a waste of time. You're just making mm -hmm. a whole lot of noise. It doesn't matter how powerful you think you are in terms of your faith yes. and, and and all of that." He says that means nothing if you have no no love. It doesn't matter how you 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 you, you give 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 things away, how self-sacrificing you are. He says, if that's not being done through love, and then the thing that always resonates with me as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, one yes. who believes in prophecy, and don't get me wrong, I believe in prophecy, but Paul says, you know what? Mm -hmm. Prophecies will fail. Yes. Tongues will cease. Knowledge will vanish away. But he says, love Love it is that will endure to the end, to the end. He says of, of the three things, faith, hope, and love, he says the greatest is love. And I made the point, Joe, I made the point. You may not be as gifted as, because we don't need to compare. We don't need to right. compare. But, but regardless of your giftedness or lack thereof, we can love. everybody can love. Yes, that's the point. Everybody can love because... Love is a choice, Joe. It's a it choice is. that we, we just it as is. our people choose to hate, mm -hmm. we can choose to love. And Paul says, it is not the speaking of tongues that is the crucial thing. Yes. The, the important thing is love. Do you love? And, and Jesus said it best in John 13, 35. He says, this is how folks are going to know you are my disciples, that you are Christians. When you have love for each other, when there's mm. love happening among you, that is the greatest weakness that you and I have and can give, that we are part of the body of Christ, Paul says, when there is love, when there's love. Most, most definitely. You mentioned something uh, last week about love is hardcore. When you love mm. others, I love that. Mm. Mm. Because mm. you know, I love that. folks, folks, folks. Well, I had one guy said to me some years ago, you know, P 
pastor, you're always preaching about this, this love stuff. You know, I want to hear some, some prophecy, pastor, some hardcore <laughs> revelation and Daniel and revelation prophecy. And, and don't, don't, don't misunderstand me, Joe. Those things have their places, right? They do. But mm-hmm. I had to point out to the brother, listen, there is nothing more hardcore than loving someone unconditionally. There's nothing more hardcore than loving those who hate you and praying for those who despitefully use you. There's nothing more than loving someone unconditionally. That's hardcore. That's a hard thing to do. We we can't do that outside of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. However, we can choose to do so. It's still a choice. Amen. Not easy, but we can choose. That's good. One last one. You spoke about your request for a female pastor. What was the reason for that? <laughs> <laughs> I had to put that in there. <laughs> well, I, I know I know you hold on to that. Well, you know, to 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 create balance, to create balance. As you know, we have three pastors there. And before Pastor Latoya came on board, we had two, myself and Pastor Kevin. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ensure that there was a balance there because one of the points I was making that it has to be about the unity of the body and the body advancing the kingdom of God and not about my pet projects, not about yes. my the thing I like as a church leader and as a member. And I spoke about the fact that as men, sometimes, you know, we 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 can get into we can get get into our, we can be driven rather by our egos. We can be driven yes. by our egos. Our mm-hmm. egos can get in the way as men. But women have a way, Joe, of, of balancing that. You know, they have a way of reining it in or bringing us back to 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 ground level. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that it would be a wise thing because, of course, I had experienced that when we had Pastor Pastor Jennifer Hernandez as part of the team. I'd experienced how Pastor Hernandez had God had really used her to yes. to balance things out, to yes. balance things out. And she so was I, a wonderful addition. Yeah, so I saw I saw that. And so when Pastor Hernandez, when Pastor Jen left, I thought that it would be a good thing to ensure that 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 one of the pastors, one of our pastors would be female. And Pastor Latoy has come has come at the right time. She stepped right in and yes. she serves as a beautiful balance. And so I, that's the point I was making, Joe. Mm-hmm. That is good to have that balance. And again, lifting up the point that every person in the body of Christ has a role to play, and that role is as important as the next role. That is 100% right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. I really appreciate this segment here about the body. Just a little bit more detail. I thank you for that. And um, continue to study the lesson upon that, because what Paul said was crucial. Yes. uh, Even to this day. Yes. And even very relevant. Comes. Very, very relevant. relevant. All right. Pastor is wonderful. Thank you once again. But that is always lead us out. Sure. Father God, we thank you so much for calling us into the body of Christ. And you've decided where we fit. We thank you for that. We ask that you continue to help us to use our gifts to expand the kingdom. May you continue to bless Joe and Dawn as they use this podcast to advance the kingdom and share your word. Lord, of course, we we, we we want to take just a few moments to lift up Pastor Kevin Acosta. Yes. You know, he lost his dad, Carlos, this past Sunday. Oh, Lord, we pray that you will give him the strength necessary and his family the strength necessary to go through this, this time of mourning. We know, Lord, that there is coming a day when all of this will be in the past, that death would have been defeated. Until then, encourage our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, as always. It's always a pleasure. And, thank you, John. Uh, thank um, Christine for what she's done. And, you know, she'd be blessed and the rest of the family. Because you all guys, you all, you all win. That's what's important. We Praise all God. win thank for you, that. Thank you. Have a wonderful week, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.